This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning. We hope you're having a great start to your day. I'm Rebecca Smith. I'm Bill Bryant. Here we are. It is Wednesday, December 23rd, two days before Christmas. It's here. Wow. <laughs> now at 6 a.m., a record number of people expected to hit the roads this holiday season, but drivers could come across more than cheap gas prices today. Bad weather in the forecast. And it's already kind of nasty out there this morning. We're tracking showers and some thunder showers moving through during the morning commute yet again. But later today, it's severe weather threat. I'll break it down for you. This morning, you'll find out how the wife of a fallen Richmond police officer is planning to honor her husband for years to come. This is a WKYT First Alert Severe Weather Day as we begin our news this morning. It may sound odd just being a couple of days away from Christmas, but we are tracking the potential for severe thunderstorms today. Damaging winds possible. There's even a chance for tornadoes, believe it or not. Meteorologist Jim Caldwell is in our First Alert Weather Center to break it all down for us. Guys, we're in a heightened area of concern under the severe weather threat. The new guidelines uh, that went into play last year. We're in the enhanced area here in Lexington, Frankfurt, up to Cynthiana and Georgetown. And then you see a slight risk showing up across parts of southeastern Kentucky. Now, don't let the word slight uh, deter you from preparing for maybe a potentially damaging winds or large hail because we could certainly run into both anywhere across the Commonwealth. Peak time for this is not this morning, it's not the showers and thunder showers we're running into. Into, that's just more of a nuisance. It's what we run into between about 5 o'clock this evening and midnight, where we're talking about high winds, heavy rain, hail at an elevated risk, and yes, as Rebecca said, even an isolated tornado cannot be ruled out. We will track all of this hour by hour of some of our high resolution model data coming up in just a few minutes. Okay, see you then. We have a lot of news going on. Now, on to a breaking news alert this morning. Dozens of crews on the scene of a fire that started at the Rock Castle County Detention Center. A lot of questions at that scene as to how all this happened. The jail is on Main Street in Mount Vernon. It is an active investigation going on this morning. State police are helping to evacuate the inmates at this point. WKYT's Mark Barber is live now with the breaking details and what we're learning. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Bill. And that evacuation is actually taking place behind the building, but directly behind me here on Main Street here in Mount Vernon. You see the fire crews out here, many of them still putting their attention on the building itself. And behind them, we actually have the multiple law enforcement agencies, as you mentioned, state police, many others here, assisting in the evacuation of the building, bringing the inmates out of the jail. Now, they say that at last check, which was 45 minutes ago, they were still working to put this fire out inside the Rock Castle County Detention Center. Now, we're told that that fire started around 3 this morning in the ventilation system that was above a jail cell. Now investigators tell us that when they got the call for the fire, they got here as quickly as they could. They say that when they did get here, they saw smoke and flames pouring from the building. Now they tell us that they uh, did bring in extra hands, extra law enforcement officials to help guard those inmates once they were out of the building. We're told that they then placed those inmates on school buses and then those buses are being taken to other detention centers in neighboring counties. Now we are told that even though they worked to get inmates out as quickly as they could, several inmates as well as jail staffers were hospitalized for smoke inhalation. Now, we are also told that fire crews at this time do not know what may have sparked these flames. We're told again that the fire started above a jail cell, but at this time there's no word if somebody may have started it or if it started on its own. Fire investigators tell us that state fire marshal and arson investigators are on their way here this morning. They will be trying to determine the cause of the fire. Now, they say that extensive smoke and water damage will keep this jail closed for the next few weeks. Now the jail or rather the um, courthouse is adjacent to the jail here. We're told that even though some of the smoke did filter into that courthouse, it will be open for business today. But in the meantime, again, crew still working to figure out what started this fire here in the jail and they're still working to get these inmates moved on to other detention centers. Live in Mount Vernon, Mark Barber, WKYT. All right, and one would suspect we'll know more as the day goes along. We'll stay on top of the story, and we thank you, Mark. It's 6.04 now here on WKYT, and we're tracking the investigation into a man's death in Harrison County. The coroner says the man's body was found last night in some water off River Road in Cynthiana. So far, investigators have not been able to identify the man. They're also not sure how the man ended up in the water. 
Well, just days before Christmas, families in Leslie County are preparing to bury four people who were killed in a suspected DUI crash. Judy Pennington Adams, her pregnant granddaughter, Tiffany Williams Morgan, and friend Charlene Lewis died in a crash in Clay County. Tiffany's son, Kyson, who would have been two years old tomorrow, was among them. He died hours later at the hospital. Two separate ceremonies for the five victims are planned today in Leslie County. Police suspect Jason Gibson was drunk and on drugs when he crashed into their car on Hal Rogers Parkway Friday night. At last check, he is still in the hospital and has not at this point been charged. Kentucky Governor Matt Bevin has ordered the state to prepare new marriage licenses that do not include the names of county clerks. It's an attempt to protect the religious beliefs of Rowan County Clerk Kim Davis and other local elected officials who refuse to issue marriage licenses to same-sex couples. It is unclear how Bevin's order will affect a federal lawsuit brought by four couples against Davis. Plans are in the works to honor on a long-term basis a fallen Richmond police officer. Officer Daniel Ellis died after being shot last month in Richmond. The Officer Daniel Ellis Memorial 5K Run Walk is going to be held on Saturday, March 19th, starting at the Richmond Center. That race will benefit the Daniel Ellis Memorial Fund, which is being established by his wife, Katie. Coming up at 6.30, you're going to hear from Officer Ellis's widow, who is talking exclusively to WKYT. Uh, about uh, how she has felt such an outpouring of love in the community and this foundation that she is starting in his honor. Well, new this morning, one person was flown to the hospital after a three car crash in Franklin County. It happened just before 11 o'clock on Manly Leestown Road, north of Frankfurt. Police say a truck crashed into a Mustang that was pulling out of a driveway. That caused a third car to crash. One person was flown to UK hospital, two others taken to a local hospital. Police say they think alcohol was involved. A Whitley County school bus driver involved in a deadly accident that killed a child will not be charged. A grand jury decided not to indict Amanda Wolliver. Police say her bus hit and killed Jonathan Chatham in March, moments after he stepped off the school bus. The boy's grandmother says the family never expected charges to be filed, but she says the family is planning a lawsuit against the school board because of Jonathan's death. Our calls to the Whitley County School Board have not been returned. Well, hundreds of children in Montgomery County receive toys for Christmas, and it's all thanks to some very generous people. The Arms of Love organization gave out those toys last night at the TK Gymnastics in Mount Sterling. It's the 11th year for the toy giveaway. Many of the toys come from a toy drive that the Montgomery County Detention Center holds every year. First alert, severe weather day. And I'll tell you what, I can't remember the last time we had one. It's been several months. We've gone through a pretty calm period. But now that we are getting into the more ramped up Christmas holiday season, we run into severe weather day. Not for snow, what you would think we would be. It's for strong and even severe thunderstorms. Not what we're tracking out there right now, because what we're tracking right now is not the intense stuff that we'll likely see later on today. That will be on the move, though, as we head into the afternoon and evening hours. That's when we'll run into some of that. So let's get right to tracking some of what we're seeing out there right now. Let's zoom in on some of these showers and thunder showers that have been tracking through parts of central Kentucky. First, a good broad view where we're seeing some of the heavier rain now working its way through uh, parts of Harrison County, through Bourbon County, and now eventually crossing the Ohio River and getting out of here. That's going to be a track that it takes here very soon. A little bit closer inspection on some of these showers and thunder showers. Keep that in mind as it's passing right through Carlisle and the heaviest stuff again getting ready to roll through Cynthiana. You folks are getting ready to see some of the heaviest stuff come through your neighborhoods very soon. Had a little thunder off in the distance you were hearing a little while ago. Now now that is gone. So now, as we track some of the other activity going on through the day today, it'll be rounds of showers and thunderstorms that appear here in the afternoon and evening. Severe weather threat over a big chunk of the country. Millions of people included in on that. Strong to severe thunderstorms, basically from 5 to midnight. That's going to be the best opportunity to get in on some of the action. Damaging winds, large hail, and even isolated tornadoes for the folks in Kentucky. I think maybe an outbreak uh, of several tornadoes. 
windows down to our southwest across parts of Mississippi into Alabama. That is a good chance for that to happen out there. It looks like even though we are also in an enhanced risk. So today we're talking about the rounds of storms. So strong to severe threat starts rolling through here during that window we were talking about. High winds, heavy rain. We move into Christmas Eve. It's very windy out there and a few thunderstorms will be possible. Maybe not to the level that we see today. Hopefully we can zap some of the energy out of the atmosphere. And then Christmas Day, instead of dealing with heavy snow, it's heavy rain and storms are back. And it's the time to start watching some of those area creeks and streams as we're just going to continue to add water to very saturated ground. It doesn't take a lot to get the ground saturated. And that's what we are about to experience uh, around here. There's our seven day forecast. We've got the heightened red threats out for today as we are talking about that potential of severe weather and then more rounds of rain and thunderstorms, record breaking temperatures, everything coming at us over the next few days. Sarah. Wow. It's just unreal. Unreal yeah, stuff. Yeah, you couldn't have called it, you know? Maybe you could have. Well, I tried really hard. <laughs> I tried really hard. <laughs> Each morning we bring you weather and traffic together. Probably not too much traffic out there this morning for you. Maybe a lot of people have the day off, kids not in school, this being the day before Christmas Eve day. Uh, things looking pretty good out there, no major issues. So those last minute shoppers, no doubt, will be in the uh, shopping areas today. You know the busy spots around uh, Fayette Mall and, of course, Hamburg and uh, maybe Richmond Center over in Madison County. Some of those uh, folks are uh, getting those last minute gifts. We have no reports of any uh, major uh, problems that right now. Nicholasville Road's a 14 minute ride in, and you you can get from Richmond to Lexington right now in about an even half hour. So uh, good news for early morning commuters. Yeah, More great. news coming up on WKYT here a couple of days before Christmas morning. Stay with us. The rush home for the holidays is on. A look at what a record number of travelers can expect. And Twitter may be taking to the skies with a drone. And we'll have details about that coming up in about seven minutes or so.